The EcoFlow Reaver 2 Pro has more than double the capacity of its smaller version, Reaver 2. The USB Type-C is a 100 watts fast charging port. It comes with three cables. This is a XT60 to 12 volt car charger, a DC to DC cable, which is gonna be great for connecting the uh, 12 volt accessories. For example, you can use this cable to power a Wi-Fi router to maximize the efficiency to avoid the AC output and a very high gauge AC cord, which plugs in the back. And we can see its charging speed. I'm very impressed by the previous gen or its smaller version, the Reaver 2, which has 360 watts of charging speed. And I also appreciate the fact that no AC adapter is required. It has a AC adapter built in. Same design with a handlebar in the back. What is this? Well, oh, 900 watts, amazing. Well, that is totally unexpected. So it will be done in like 50 minutes. Came in 28% charged. This is crazy for this kind of compact unit. According to this chart on the box, it takes 70 minutes to fully recharge and 4.5 hours to 9 hours to fully recharge from 220 watts solar panel. The car charging takes 9 hours. USB-C charging port is a bi-directional port, so it can recharge and discharge using the same port. 9 hours to fully recharge the battery bank. In terms of runtime, uh, 60 hours powering a lamp, 10 watts lamp, mini fridge 60 watts, that, that is 10 hours and 60 watt hour laptop, more like a MacBook Pro 14 inch, that's 10 charges and it, CPAP is 40 watts, around 40 watts, 15 to 30 hours of runtime. And this is the specification from the user manual. It looks like the AC output is rated at 800 watts continuous and 1,600 watts, which is doubled for peak power output, a surge power output. And the battery used inside is a lithium ion phosphate battery, which means 80% of bat capacity after 3000 charging cycles. This is the latest and the greatest battery tech in terms of portable power stations. There are several ways to recharge this battery bank using the current AC mode, which will give us the fastest charging speed around 900 watts. And then we got the USB Type-C 100 watts input. And now let's disconnect the cable in the back and we'll try recharge it using the USB Type-C input. Well, for this charging test, I'm gonna be using the basis 100 watts USB-C GAN charger connected to this battery bank using Type-C cable. and the charging increases. Let's see, the reading, yeah, it hit 100 watts. Uh, a little bit over because there's conversion loss. It's not gonna be 100% efficient. So that's the se second way to recharge it. And third way is by using the solar panel via that um, XT60 port. You can use some generic um, solar panel with MC4 connection with this sort of MC4 to XT60 cable to recharge the battery bank. So it looks like the 200 watts to 300 watts solar panel is going to be a great size for this portable power station as its solar charging input is rated at 220 watts max and the char car charging input is 100 watts max, uh, which is rated correctly for uh, most cars because if it pulls too much power, it may uh, burn the fuse in the car. So charging through the car may be slower. The Reaver 2 Pro also offers a five years warranty 
this is excellent for a lithium ion phosphate battery, uh, which is gonna last probably 10 years, even if I use it on a daily basis, because 3,000 times um, charging and discharging, that's insane. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the, all the ports in front. The AC power on off switch is gonna, not gonna be able to activate uh, unless this power button is pressed once. And if I press it again, it will not be able to power off because I really appreciate this design. Long press for three seconds to power off because some of these AC um, devices connected may be a mission critical. So uh, not having to accidentally just one press to power off is actually a great design. A lot of, uh, don't take it for granted because a lot of the other power station manufacturers do one button press to power on or off. The screen does turn off to conserve power though. And we got three USB type A ports and one USB C. As I demoed earlier, the USB type C is a bi-directional port, which means I can use it to charge and recharge the battery bank. It's gonna be great for most recent MacBooks that may take 100 watts input. And the DC input and AC outputs DC outputs and AC outputs are controlled by these similar switches with one button press. Okay, and this port is uh, designed for regular 12 volt devices. If you think the charging output here is not sufficient, we can totally plug in a USB-C or USB type A car charger to increase its connectivity. So the four AC ports here shares 800 watts of total uh, continuous output and the surge power output is rated at 1,600 watts. And I can add it to my phone app. This is how, you do, how to do it. It will actually automatically discover this device. I'm just gonna go add. Only supports 2.4 gigahertz. And now it scans through a list of the Wi-Fi network. Looks like it remembered my previously uh, set up River 2 username and password from my uh, Wi-Fi router. And now it's gonna make the connection and pass that information to the um, power bank and it's gonna bind to this phone or to my EcoFlow app where I will be able to see all the charging and discharging status or turn on and off all these ports. I think output, yes, that's input, output. I can turn on or off, toggle the DC or AC power output. I can also see the charging and discharging speed from here. So for example, if I connect it to the AC cord, let's start recharging. That'll be uh, curious to see if I will be able to uh, charge it using both the USB-C and the AC output. Let me do that. Let's do this test. I'll connect it to my wall power outlet. And from here, I can see the charging speed. Uh, 44 minutes remaining. Input is 890 watts. So that is displayed in real time, it's communicating it over Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. If Wi-Fi is not available, I believe Bluetooth will be used. And from here under the setting page, I'll be able to limit its charging speed from here. Uh, sometimes you don't wanna charge that fast and wanna reduce the fan speed. Uh, the current fan is running and device sharing, I can create another account to share it with others so other people can control it remotely. Car input, that um, charging current is also customizable. DC mode, solar charging, car charging, these are, I'm just gonna set it to automatic. Also features a multi, the maximum power point tracking uh, to maximize the uh, solar charging input based on its voltage input. Uh, discharging and charging level. So if you want to use it as a UPS, you might want to, you know, limit as it, you know, already kind of highlighted in the uh, 
a different color, a uh, gray. Setting these threshold will prevent the device from fully discharging or over or you know always charged at one hundred percent, which is not very good for the battery life longevity. Although it is rated at three thousand, right? So if you use it, intend to use it as a UPS uninterrupted power supply, you will probably need to set this one here because you will not be able to exercise the battery too much. Therefore. Uh, setting this range, this threshold is good for the battery longevity uh, if you don't just don't exercise it much. And the unit timeout is set to never. I, I wanna probably wanna set it to one hour just in case if I wanna turn off the, I forgot to turn off the battery um, on off switch, then uh, it will be off after one hour after it's I sit, sitting there idling, not consuming any electricity, right? The screen timeout is set to five minutes which is acceptable. The AC timeout is set to six hours. Again, I'm gonna to try to reduce it to maybe one hour or two hours because AC, when the AC is on, the internal inverter will be constantly on. Therefore, um, it's gonna consume certain electricity, which I try to prevent. Okay, firmware update is up to date. I like the fact that it supports over the air update. So any bugs or new features can be introduced or bugs can be fixed. Uh, yeah, and the specification. This is basically an overview of what it's capable of. Okay, awesome. And from here, I can uh, monitor its, its overall status if I have a solar panel connected. Uh, looks like the uh, it's not using the USB Type-C to charging the battery, uh, sitting at 43% already, 41 minutes left. So if I unplug the AC cord, it should be able to switch over to the USB Type-C charging. Yes, it actually shows USB-C port is active. It's kind of hard to see from here. There you go, that's USB-C port. Yes. 93 watts as shown here this is great a great result all right yeah so that's my first impression of this power unit i may uh, do some more follow-up video and do so solar charging and its discharging capabilities in my future review thank you very much for watching hope you find it useful